In this video, we're looking at how to use the graphing calculator to answer questions where we want to compare two population variances using a hypothesis testing procedure. So we're talking about using the F-test, basically, to compare two population variances. So let's look at this problem and see if it fits that mold. This is arrival time variation. Variation in the on-time arrival percentages was analyzed for 21 time blocks accounting for every hour of the day at Miami International Airport and Fort Lauderdale International Airport. The standard deviation for MIA was 14.2 with a mean on-time arrival rate of 66.7%. The standard deviation for Fort Lauderdale was 12.5 with a mean on-time arrival rate of 78%. At the 5% significance level, test the claim that the two airports have the same variation in on-time rates. So we're going to compare these two variances and see if there are two standard deviations, basically, and see if they represent um, populations that come from the same variance. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that then. We're going to press STAT in our calculator. Well, actually, I need to turn it on first. Then we'll press STAT in our calculator. We're going to arrow over to where it says TEST. So, in the test menu, we're looking for the F test. It's actually usually faster to scroll up and go starting from the bottom, basically. So if you hit up, we'll start here at the ANOVA procedure, linear regression, to sample F test. It's the third one there from the bottom. So in my calculator, it's option D. Depending on which TI calculator you have, it won't always be option D. But either way, it's the two sample F test that we're interested in. So we're going to highlight that one and hit enter. And once we do that, it asks us whether we have data or we have stats. Now, data means we have the data, raw data, in the calculator entered in as lists. And we don't have the raw data here. We just have the summary statistics values. So let's go over to where it says stats and hit enter for that one. And then you'll see that we have a better uh, set of values here to enter. We have S1, N1, S2, N2, and so on and so forth. OK, so let's talk about S1. Now, if we do the calculation so that we uh, put MIA as S1, then it's going to be the standard deviation for MIA is 14.2. So let's go ahead and type in 14.2. You may notice my calculator has data already in there. That's because it's taking the data from elsewhere in the calculator and plugging it in in case that's the data we want to use. Obviously, we're overriding that information, though. Now, the N1 here we're going to look at. And see, we don't have the N1 here, but we do say above that it says variation in the on-time arrival percentage was analyzed for 21 time blocks accounting for every hour of the day at MIA and Fort Lauderdale. So it looks like each one of these has 21 different time blocks that have been looked at. So we're going to say the N is 21 for both of these. So N1 is 21. The standard deviation for the second group is for the FLL airport. It's 12.5%. So for Fort Lauderdale International, we use 12.5 for S2. And its end value is also 21. OK. Now from here, um, just one thing as a little heads up here. It's traditional to let the, uh, and I actually have a little typo here in my calculator. Be careful. Uh, I wrote 2.5 for the standard deviation for Fort Lauderdale. It should be 12.5. So let me correct that. And you can just type over if you make a mistake as long as you haven't hit enter yet. But anyways, what I was going to say here is that it's traditional to let the larger standard deviation be uh, S1. So if, if these had been reversed in the order in the problem, if it had been FLL and MIA switched around, and FLL had 12.5 and MIA had 14.2, even though the Fort Lauderdale International Airport information would come first in the problem, I'd let MIA be S1 because it's traditional to let the larger standard deviation go first. Um, the calculator is going to handle that probably even if you reversed it, but on a paper and pencil method, you always let S1 be the bigger sample standard deviation. And the calculator probably would uh, handle it either way and wouldn't have a problem with it. But um, just to be in the habit, always let your S sub 1 or your first standard deviation, let that be the larger of the two, and then put the smaller one for S2. OK, good. So. We've done that in our calculator, and we're pretty much ready to go. We just have to hit the right uh, alternative hypothesis symbol here. So it says, test the claim that the two airports have the same variation. Well, if that has the same variation, it means sigma 1 squared is equal to sigma 2 squared. They're, they're equal to each other, right? That means the alternative is not equal to. So we're going to use not equal to as our symbol. Hit Enter. Come down and press the Calculate button. And this will do the calculation for us. OK, so it's taking a little bit, but there it is. We finally get the solution. It, re it re tells us our HA, not equal to. It tells us our F test stat, which was 1.29 in this case. It gives us the p-value for the test. 
which is something we normally don't do in class typically, but um, sometimes it depends if you're using software in your class or if you're at least approximating the p-value. But here the calculator is giving us the precise p-value. It's telling us it's about 57%, so the p-value is pretty large, which means that we will not reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is not smaller than the alpha. So since the p-value is larger than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis, and that means that we assume they are the same in fact. If you scroll down, you'll just get summary values, right? So we have S1 again, S2 again, N1, and N2, and that's just to confirm you entered the right things in the calculator. So basically your F test stat though is 1.29, and based on the p-value that's provided here, we know that we will not reject the null hypothesis, which means we will allow this to be um, remain as seen as true. So we'll basically say that they do in fact have the same variation in on-time arrival rates. All right, that's it.